Over the years, I've come to realize that it's actually pretty hard to maintain the entire garden at once. One of the practices that I've sort of forcefully adopted is that you have to tackle every single part of the garden one by one. You just simply can't manage the entire thing at the same time. Which is why I spent last month actually resetting this entire garden. I fully ripped out anything that wasn't productive and I mulched it and planted it with my fall vegetables. But in the process of resetting this garden, I did neglect the other. So today you have to get over there, clean it up, plant those beds, and even do a little bit of direct seeding. I know I promised I was gonna remove these tomatoes a long time ago, but today I'm finally over it. The powdery mildew on them is so bad, it's spreading to my peppers. And so let's just go ahead and cut these out. This bed isn't going to be the focus of today's video, but I do wanna get these out of here finally so we could see what this bed truly looks like. I've talked about this a few times now, but basically I've had root knot nematodes in different parts of my garden. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull probably every other tomato plant here. Ugh just to take a look at their roots and see if they have any issues. This actually looks good to me. There's chunky roots, but they're not chunky in random areas. They're just a little bit thick. I don't see any real signs of root knot nematode here. If there are any, it's very, very minor. So the very minimum, I'm definitely not gonna plant tomatoes here next year, but the good news is, is that there's no severe infection of these roots. Just to address the question before it comes up, this will not be composted. This has disease, including viral and bacterial diseases, which I just don't really wanna risk propagating. It is a decent amount of green matter, but nothing that critical. So all of these tomatoes are going into the green bin to the municipal yard waste. Wow, we got a big tomato hiding in there. What's really weird is that none of the tomatoes I grew this year should look like this shape. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on here. There's a very slight blush to it, so I might leave it on my counter to see if it ripens. One of the advantages of using cotton or hemp twine is that I could just throw this in the yard waste bin or compost without worrying about contaminating it with any plastic. The tomatoes are gone. They have no root on nematode. The only thing left to do for this particular bed is to add some fertilizer and compost because tomatoes are very heavy feeders. So you want to plant into them right after pulling them out without adding a little bit of fertility. But that's not the goal today. The goal today is to fill that giant raised bed behind me. And fortunately, we did do that fall seed starting video about a month ago. All those starts are about this big. So let's go grab them plant this bed out and do some direct seeding and talk about how I'm going to space all this out. First, let's tackle this three by four bed. And the goal behind this one is actually to do some direct seeding. So the things that I want to direct seed in there are the provider bush beans. I also have the Market Express turnips, Oceanside spinach, Red Russian kale I won't direct seed and the I won't direct seed. Cause I already actually have these as seedlings that we'll transplant. And the last one is this magic carpet blend, Snapdragons. So the idea behind this bed is that it's all going to be direct sown just to try to mix it up a little bit. I don't do a lot of direct seeding and I wanna try doing a little bit more. The first one that we're going to put in to establish the overall bed, I guess, is the beans because the beans are going to be the main sort of crop out of this particular raised bed. The Market Express turnips are just going to be filler that'll be harvested and later, basically they just won't exist because they'll be harvested out within two months. So I'm not really considering them. They're just kind of going to go in wherever they need to go in. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a handful. And the way I think I want to run this is that first I'll draw a line at one foot. So right about here is a foot. Here is another foot right there. So now I have some clear lines to play with here. And I think what I'll do is I'll drop another line about six inches away. Now the goal behind this is that I wanna have two double rows of beans with a foot space in the middle. This will give them a little bit of breathing room, but still give me a lot of density so that I get plenty of beans. Now, if you know me, then you know that I've had some <laughs> historic troubles with beans in the past. And I think it's something to do with my in-ground soil. So that's one of the reasons I'm really excited to get a raised bed here, because I really wanna get some <laughs> actual bush beans so we could get some nice beans straight out of the garden. So I'm gonna go ahead, two seeds every place, and I'll do it on a line over there, and I'll draw one more line and drop another furrow over there. Quick water before I go ahead and actually place these down into the soil. All I'm doing is pressing them firmly so that they're fully encased in soil. That way when I do my next watering pass, they shouldn't be able to move or float around. Now my beans are in, I'm gonna go ahead and hill them up a little bit and give them a nice firm press. Next up we have the Market Express turnips. These are a quite tasty turnip, I find that if you don't think you like turnips, you might like these because they are very crisp, they're a little bit sweet, and they're not as spicy as maybe most traditional turnips that you might have had in the past. So the way I'm going to treat this is that I'm going to put them down the middle in between these two bean rows. So I think what I'll do 
is I'll just make a couple divots with my fingers here. I'm going to try to sprinkle two to three seeds per hole. And in this case, if they all germinate, that's totally fine. This is called multi-sowing. And the way it works is that they will just push each other apart and they'll just form smaller turnips, which is perfectly fine, especially for something like a salad turnip where you're not really trying to get a big old juicy wet bite of turnip. You just want a nice crisp, refreshing turnip, more of them rather than fewer large ones. So there goes all these guys. It's probably good. I'm actually going to go ahead and just scatter out whatever leftover seeds I have because there wasn't that many. And if they make it, they make it. If they don't, they don't. Now what I want to do is add some snapdragons right here. I don't want to add that many because they are pretty small seeded anyway. So the way I'm going to do that is I just pressed in a little furrow with my hand there. I'm going to get some of this vermiculite, the fine grained vermiculite. Vermiculite just acts as a sort of sponge for water, but it also has a very handy thing, which is that it lets light through. Now snapdragons are very small seeded and they also require light for germination. So that first bit was just to get everything wet. Now what I'm going to do is take my snapdragons and just tap out some seeds. They're very, very small seeds. So I'm probably going to put something like 20 seeds in this tiny little patch here. And we'll just see if they make it. Basically, I'm going to cover it entirely with vermiculite again. This will, again, make sure that they have contact with water and also let light through, which will aid germination. So that'll be our little test patch there of snapdragons. There we go. Maybe one more pass. Just like so. And now this bed is entirely planted. Here we are at the four by eight bed and there's a lot of room for a lot of plants here. Now, really quickly, just to describe what you're seeing, I have a contwine piece one foot away from the edge of this side and one foot away from the edge of that side. So what do we have here? We have a mixture of cabbages. So here's eight cabbages. And then we have some cheddar cauliflowers. Those will probably go in the back because they'll take a long time. I don't really need to be close to them. And what else do we have here? It looks like burgundy broccoli. That's an interesting one. That's from Botanical Interest. It's one of the sprouting broccolis. And then I have my Long Island Brussels sprouts. So actually the Brussels will probably go out over to the back just because I'm not gonna even think about them all the way out until spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a layout here, see if it makes sense and see if we could fit all these plants in this one bed. That took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but what I ended up going with was Long Island Brussels sprouts on the back, the furthest away, in between are tiara cabbages. These are smaller cabbages that form over the course of maybe two months, three months max. Then in front of that, I have my orange, yellow cauliflowers all in a row. So there's one, two, three, four, five of them. Then I have a couple more of these tiara cabbages to fill in these gaps. And then the very front row is all burgundy broccoli. The reason why this works is because the tiara cabbages will grow quickly. I'll be able to harvest them out, which will free up space for these bigger plants to help fill in and continue to produce all throughout the season. So now all I have to do is go ahead and actually pop every single one of these into the ground right where I placed it. And now we have a full bed of brassicas. It does look a little tight in some areas, but again, I'm confident that I could harvest out these tiara cabbages as they come to make space for these bigger plants. And then it should be actually quite spacious. We do still actually have a little bit of room to sneak in some trailing nasturtiums and things like that around the corners. But other than that, all I need to do here is water mulch and this bed is done. Earlier I showed you guys a bunch of different seeds and I wanted to call them out again because they're part of our fall grow along bundle. These are all seeds that I'll be starting both in raised beds, in ground, in containers like I'm doing right now that all of you guys could also grow along with me. Now the fun thing about these is that they should work in most zones. Now of course if you're in an extreme cold area, maybe some of you already have snow, these won't work well for you but you can maybe get a little sneak of a harvest with some spinach, which is extremely frost tolerant. There's also the red Russian kale. The beans are pretty quick, they're 50 days. So honestly, probably not ideal if you're under zone eight or so, but today we are going to be starting all these. So the first one I have here is the Checo broccoli, one of my favorites. The reason why I like it so much is that it produces a standard crown or head of broccoli, but then once you collect that head, it will produce an abundance of side shoots continuously throughout the entire lifespan of the plant. So I like to think of it as broccoli that turns into bonus broccolini later, which for me is my preferred style. I love broccolini. Now back here, I'm gonna throw one of these purple broccolis that we planted over in that raised bed, just cause I wanna see how it performs in a grow bag instead of in a bigger raised bed. I'm trying to always grow multiple things either in ground in raised beds or in containers as well so I could get a wide breadth of experience with growing them in different scenarios. Now these last two I will be direct seeding so I have the Oceanside spinach here which is actually probably named after Oceanside 
or maybe it is, uh, up here in San Diego. The thing with spinach is that it's daylight sensitive. What that means is that if you should grow spinach at the wrong time of year, no matter what you do, it's going to bolt. Once it sees a certain amount of daylight hours, it's going to bolt or flower and that's going to kill your harvest entirely. So with spinach, my understanding, it's actually something I don't grow very often, is it could go very tight with the spacing here. So I'm going something like four inches apart, which actually, <laughs> I guess I should read the seed packet. Wow, it says seed spacing three quarters of an inch. So <laughs> what I'm going to do instead is just go ahead and sprinkle some seeds all across the top of this pot, and we'll just see what happens. Again, I'm not that invested in spinach because I don't usually eat it that often. I prefer other leafy greens, but I am very curious to try growing it, see if I like it even more. All I'm going to do here is firm the seeds in, and then after this, I'll add a little layer of soil over them to make sure they're well buried and water it in. Now, the last one that I will be direct seeding today are these provider bush beans. Again, I've had struggles, <laughs> real struggles with beans here. I don't know why they really hate my soil. I don't know if something contaminated it, if there's some bacterial disease, but every time I try to grow them in ground, they just die. So raised beds, containers, that's the life for me. And here we're going to be pretty aggressive in seeding these in, because I do want actually to get a last little bit of fall beans here. So these I'm going to just take my finger, press them down into the soil, and that's it. Now we have a very large section of the garden planted out. We've removed some problem plants, and I've actually started a nice little update to my container garden to be more attuned with fall. So let me know if you guys have any questions, but I have some watering and some soil to add here. I'll see you guys next time.